Hey y'all, welcome to episode five of Create This Book by Mariah Elizabeth and Ashley Monet. That would be me. Things are looking a little different around here. Normally I'd be over there a little bit more, but this is the last video before Christmas, so I wanted to get festive with my background. And because it's a holiday, you know we're gonna do extra this episode. We have five prompts this week. But first things first, we have the winners of my first ever giveaway. There were a lot of comments, but only 54 of them counted as entries. So then based off of a random number generator, the comments chosen belong to these two. Congratulations. If this is you, you've been contacted through that original comment with further instructions on how to claim your book. We also have our first round of shout outs. Hey. Now, if you're thinking, Ashley, you never gave us directions for how to get the shout outs. That is true. All of these people had expressed in some way that they were very disappointed that they couldn't participate in the giveaway because they are international subscribers. So I offered to give them first shout outs kind of as like a consolation. So now I'll open shout outs up to all of you. Again, super easy. You just gotta be a subscriber. Give this video a thumbs up and comment down below. Shout out in addition to your name. Easy peasy. Now to limit the number of shout outs so that there aren't like a ton that take up my whole video, I'm gonna make a rule that you have to comment within the first like 24 hours of a video going live. And side note on that, um, I have been uploading Friday, but very late at night, almost like overnight upload. YouTube seems to give me a lot of trouble if I try to upload during like high traffic times. I didn't upload take me 10 hours once, but I've been playing with this Friday overnight thing and that really seems to be like the sweet spot. Never any issues. So basically, yeah, you'll have Saturday to comment. Oh my gosh though, enough of me talking. For real this time, let's jump right in and see what I can create. For our first prompt of the week, create a family. Draw, attach, or assemble an image of a family. We've got a little Bob Ross bleed through to cover up here. Now my favorite family, of course, is mine, but my second favorite, I'll give you a hint. Da -na -na -na. Yes, the Adams family has a direct line to my black little heart. So I wanna draw a mashup, my family as the Adams family, enjoying an Adams family Christmas. Let's start with the kids. For obvious reasons, I made Landon dress as Pugsley and Phoebe dress as Wednesday. I thought it would be cute to give each kid a creepy gift. Landon will be holding Thing with a bow on him. And Phoebe's got this little box that's going to have some scary creature legs peeking out of it. Let's work in a little background. A fireplace with a little black stocking here. Gray for behind. I'm going to add a creepy Christmas tree with liner later, but for now I want to work on the frame. These family portraits are each gonna be in this like nice ornate gold frame. Let's add some ornaments to the invisible tree. <laughs> we'll line that soon, but jumping over to the parents now. Yes, Cody and I as Gomez and Morticia. I do acknowledge that um, my last several videos have included some sort of self-portrait. This is purely coincidence. I am not obsessed with drawing myself. I don't even particularly like drawing myself. But don't worry, I looked ahead at my list of ideas for future prompts and I don't think I'll be showing up in the books again for the immediate foreseeable future. Another gold frame for this one. And also a golden box down in the center that's gonna be like, um, oh, what would you call it? Like a placard, plaque, whatever. Like the, the little square where we are gonna put our Christmas greeting. Okay, liner time. Love it. I just wanted to point out the little creature box and Christmas tree on this side. And then on this one, we have our Christmas greeting. Tis the season to be creepy. Also, we're under some black mistletoe and surrounded by cobwebs. Cute. Let's Mod Podge them and cut them out. Glue them in the book. And once again, poor planning means I've covered some of the prompt. Let me just rewrite it beside here. Ugh, I love this one so much. I think the only thing that can make me like it more is if I had figured out a clever way to incorporate the cats too, cause they're family, but that's okay. Combine my family, the Adams family, creepy Christmas. These are a few of my favorite things. On to the next prompt. Create a border. Draw or put together some sort of interesting border around these pages. Step one, tape off my edges. My plan is to do a winterscape border, so I'm going in with a light blue acrylic around the edges and blending out into an even lighter blue as I move toward the center. Now for some pine branches. These are going to be in the distance a little, so I'm not really giving them much detail, and overall they're going to have like a blue tone to them. And of course it needs some background snow falling for that winter vibe. 
onto the pine branches that are now in the foreground, these get a lot more detail and color. First I painted the branches, then went in with countless little teeny tiny strokes for each pine needle. Quite a tedious and time consuming process, but worth it for the end result, I'd say. That being said, let's go ahead and just skip ahead on the other side. Ah, that's better. Okay, now I want a little snowbank all across the bottom edge. And for a little extra pop, let's do a pine cone in each corner. I'm sure these look a little basic right now, but don't fret. I'll come back in with some details later. First, I need to add some lighter green highlights on all these pine branches. Okay, here's where we started adding some shadows. There's still more to come, but I guess I got distracted wanting more snow. Added a layer of snow on top of the prompt's border. A bit of snow sprinkled on all the branches. A little bit collected on the pine cones. And more falling in the background. More snow, I say. More, more, more. Time for some black. I'll use it on the deepest shadows of the pine cones. And now going over this weak borderline with a squiggly one. I started to do the same thing on the taped border, then realized it did not make sense to do that without first pulling up the tape. So uh, let's do that. And back in with a squiggle. Next, I use colored pencil to punch up some of the colors and details. And honestly, I should have stopped, like right there. But did I? Of course not. I thought outlining the prompt letters in a metallic silver gel pen would look oh so magical. And while I did love the shine, it sure made the font look real messy. I thought I could save it by filling in the letters with white, but that made it look even worse. As a last ditch ever, I added even more metallic silver before finally resigning myself to the fact that it was ruined and I needed to start from scratch. So I covered it all up with a little pale blue acrylic and hand lettered, create a border with some little sparkles. It's okay, it works. And now we can Mod Podge and call it finished. I really love this one. Makes me just wanna go out and play in the snow. And while I don't often use a lot of blue, I've mentioned before that I hate blue, I think it really works here. Next up, create an unusual combo. Think of an object, draw it as if it's made of an unusual material. Examples, a ceiling fan made of donuts, a car made of flowers. I'm gonna start by painting the background a festive red. Last time I did this, somebody said it looked like blood, which honestly, I could see it. Um, I'm gonna work extra hard not to give that vibe this time. Now for my unusual combo. Keeping with the holiday theme, I thought it would be fun to make something out of Christmas cookies. I settled on a Christmas tree. I really think I could pull that off. So here's a little picture to show what it is I'm creating. A Christmas cookie Christmas tree. I made the font look like a couple of cookies on a plate waiting for Santa and use those pine branches again for the word tree. Cute. Now for the hard part, we gotta make this tree happen. I did something similar once. I made a fruit tray for my son's Christmas party at school and I arranged the fruit to look like a Christmas tree. It's all about taking existing shapes and kind of tetrising them to fit into another shape. For this, I started with a list of cookies I wanted to incorporate, then sketched each layer of the tree with a different type of cookie adhering to the overall shape. Once I had that figured out, I drew a cookie sheet behind it. I don't know how unusual this concept is. I'm sure some Pinterest queen has already arranged Christmas cookies to look like a Christmas tree, but whatever. I made something out of something else and it's Christmas themed, so there, I did it. The baking sheet took forever to paint with all of those teeny tiny crevices between cookies. Ugh, but I got through it. Now let's start the cookies. I did a snowflake shaped sugar cookie as the star on the top of the tree, candy cane shaped sugar cookies for the first layer, Christmas tree shaped chocolate cookies for the next, then round gingerbread cookies, then star shaped sugar cookies, then gingerbread men. In between I've got two types of small cookies. The first are traditional wedding cookies. The next are those blossom cookies with a Hershey's kiss in the center that definitely don't look like boobs. Like not at all. And for the bottom layer, I alternated classic chocolate chip with heart-shaped sugar cookies. And for the tree trunk, those little Pepperidge Farm rolled wafer straw thingies, those are so good. I used watercolor for the bases of the cookies, then decided on acrylic for the frosting. I started with white on the snowflake, as well as the candy canes, then went in with green on all the chocolate trees, every other round gingerbread cookie, all of the sugar stars, all of the sugar hearts, and as the stripes on the candy canes. Next up, a touch of red frosting. Again, my red is like the most transparent, thinnest paint I have, so I had to start with a base of white everywhere I plan to use it. Now let's take these to the next level with some colored pencil shading. 
Oh yeah, frosting mm -hmm. highlight time. And for a little special pop, I used metallic silver for the snowflake on top. Ooh, it's so shiny you can barely see it. Sign and date, Mod Podge, cut it out. And testing them out to see how I like them on the page. It just needs something. This side is fine to me, but this side has so much exposed background, we gotta add a little something something to it. And when I say a little something something, I mean an overly complex pattern, of course. I chose to do my favorite Christmas print, red and black buffalo check. Some call it buffalo plaid or gingham. It goes by many names, but whatever you call it, I love it. It's my go-to Christmas print. It's literally all over my house right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, I have a problem. Okay, here's me completing one tiny portion of the page. I'll spare you the hour it took me to finish the rest. Movie magic, baby. Oh, I love it so friggin' much. Glue everything in. B-E-A-U-tiful. This one just instantly makes me happy. Makes me think of being in my kitchen, baking cookies for the holidays. All of the warm, toasty, happy feelings. Ah. Okay, prompt number four. Create a record of your week. Answer each of the following questions every day for a week. Let's make this a little more interesting with... Glitter gel pens. I started keeping track of my answers on Sunday, December 10th, so we'll start there. What did you wear? It was my husband's work Christmas party, so I actually made an effort on this day and wore a cute Christmas sweater and some jeans. What did you eat? The party was at Sinzetti's, which is all-you-can-eat Italian food. Oh my god, we had pasta, pizza, salad, gelato, tiramisu. Oh, so good. What was the best part of the day? Uh, that would be the Christmas party I've been talking about this whole time. What was the worst part of the day? FedEx delivered an important package of mine to the wrong address and I spent days trying to sort it out and never did. I'm just out of package. PSA, FedEx sucks. What was one random activity you did? I completed Landon's school enrollment for the next year. Check that off my to-do list. Okay, the next day, Monday, December 11th. I wore a hoodie and leggings. Pretty standard for me. We ate chicken fajitas that night. Best part of the day, Landon didn't go to school, which means I didn't have to drive across town. Worst part of the day was that Landon was sick, and that's why he didn't go. Random activity, I did go grocery shopping that day. Ill. On to Tuesday the 12th, it was warmer, so I wore a t-shirt and leggings. For dinner, ate homemade chicken sandwiches and fries. Best part of the day, that was the day I hit 1K. Worst part, traffic taking Landon to and from school. Random activity, built a cat shelter on our patio for a stray that keeps coming by. Wednesday the 13th, wore a hoodie and leggings. It got cold again. <laughs> Ate homemade chicken lo mein. Best part, it snowed. Yay. Worst part, Landon went back to his dad's house. Ugh, sharing custody sucks. Zero out of ten would not recommend. Random activity, a bunch of Christmas Amazon was delivered, so I did a lot of present wrapping. Thursday the 14th. It was my anniversary, so I got real dolled up and wore a pretty dress. We went out to Outback Steakhouse for dinner. Mm. Best part, Landon had a performance at school. He was not into it at all, but I don't care. I freaking live for that crap. Worst part, there wasn't one. Truly an awesome day all around. Random activity, I'm putting the anniversary celebration because we don't normally do that. <laughs> Friday the 15th. Back to wearing hoodie and leggings. That night I made chicken, broccoli, and mashed potatoes. Best part, I never get Landon on Fridays and I got to pick him up from school, so it felt real special. But because I had to drive there, the worst part, traffic, again. Random activity, I tried the Blue Heat Takis for the first time. Not bad, not bad. And finally, Saturday the 16th, wore a t-shirt and leggings, ate spaghetti. Best part, binge watched a bunch of Hell's Kitchen. Love that show. Worst part, I was extremely unproductive. Let the house get filthy. Didn't do any YouTube work. Nada. Random activity, watched the new Exorcist movie. It was all right. Well, that was a lot of nothing but writing. I love the sparkle of it, but we can't just leave it like this. We have to make it holiday. So, time to break out the paint. Big surprise, I've chosen black. We're gonna keep it simple and just do a bunch of multicolored string lights. Super simple process. Put a dot of acrylic paint in the color that you want, then dab it with your finger to blend it out. 
Repeat for all of the colors. Then use colored pencils to blend out a nice glow. Add in the light cord. I used acrylic and a dark dull green for that. Then add a little bulb housing lined up with each of the color glows. Then using white, add a bulb in the center of each glow. Voila, easy peasy. Mod Podge the page and another one done. I don't love prompts like these where I don't get to be as artistic, but let's be real, I also don't hate them. It's kind of a nice break and an easy prompt to knock out real quick. Let's move on to our fifth and final prompt of the week. Create quick sketches. Draw something in one minute or less. Repeat drawing different things each time. First, the background. Yes, black again, but I've actually got a good reason this time, okay? I'm gonna do a bunch of Christmassy doodles, but because I'm me, I'm going with the theme of Black Christmas. Everything's spooky, or at least black in color. Such a theme simply requires a black background. Nothing I can do about it. <laughs> now that that's done, I've got our paper here with the prompt space accounted for, ah, thank you. And here we have our timer set for one minute. Guys, a minute is nothing when it comes to art. So here are the rules. Since the prompt said one minute sketches, I'm gonna give myself only one minute to complete the sketch for each picture. Then I'm gonna take it a step further and only give myself another minute to complete the liner. And I'm gonna try, without optimism, mind you, to finish coloring within another minute. The prompt literally said nothing about color, so if that part doesn't work out, mm -hmm. I'm perfectly comfortable abandoning that rule. Okay, let's begin. The first thing I decided to draw was a stocking. Simple way to dip my toes into this challenge. In fact, the shape is so basic, I finished the sketch with plenty of time to spare. Now for the liner. This part was arguably even easier than the sketch because with the sketch lines down, there's no guesswork anymore. It's pretty much just tracing at this point. That being said, you do have to move slower so you don't have sloppy lines. I still managed to have sloppy lines. <laughs> Gosh, it felt like I was moving so much faster than it appears on screen. Also, the phone was definitely getting in the way of my hand. Pretty annoying. What's worse is I didn't think to move it over here where it would be completely out of my way until the very last sketch. It's painful to watch, really. I had so much extra time on this, I did a bunch of extra fine lining that I ultimately just ended up covering when I colored it. Don't worry though, the designs get more complex as I go and it's not long before I'm struggling to finish in time. Yep, just running out the clock now. Now to color, and this is where my system starts to break down. I started with black because Black Christmas, you know? And just like that, there goes the lines I just made for apparently no reason. Again, truly felt like I was moving so much faster. <laughs> Anyways, for depth, I wanted to use a dark gray on the foot of the stocking, but in opening the marker, yeah, it, it blew all over. I feel like I took entirely too long to process that. <laughs> Already down half my time. It wasn't until I capped this marker that I saw the time and then I really started to panic. Yeah, yeah, you see how my hand is moving a little faster now? With less than 15 seconds to go, I attempted to start highlights, but the hands could not keep up with the brain. Before I knew it, five, four, three, two, one. I made it, but only by the hair of my chinny chin chin, and I knew the designs were only gonna get more complex as we went on. Next, I chose to draw a pair of mittens. Once again, didn't need the full minute on the sketch or the liner. I ran the clock out doing more fine lining that I ended up covering up yet again. <laughs> Erase. And again, using the same colors, really struggled with time. I was down to just 10 seconds, so I paused my timer to uncap and test my paint pen. When I was ready, I swear I hit the resume button, but as you can see, I was speeding off and the time had not continued. This is me realizing what I've done, and I don't know why I bothered resuming the timer like you already failed. <laughs> I decided at that point that if I struggled coloring the next one, I was gonna drop the minute rule for coloring. Drew a candy cane for this one. Again, no issues, coming in under time for the sketch. The liner I finished just in time. Erased. And tried a new strategy for this one, uncapping all of the markers in advance so coloring could go faster. This was efficient, but I was trying to go so fast that I was sloppy as hell. All kinds of outside the lines, and I still didn't finish the highlights in time. So with that, I scrapped the coloring rule. Still one minute for sketching and lining, but I would color at my leisure. Next up, a snow globe. Another sketch that came in under time. The liner went even faster. I was feeling a little cocky. 
But then I erased my pencil lines and realized how poorly I had done the liner. Honestly though, I felt no guilt about fixing it given that I had finished the lining with so much time left. I'm sure I still spent less than a minute on all the liner. The coloring was so much better this time around. Funny how when you have time to do something, you can do it well. My next drawing was a present, but a dark twist on that. Let's start speeding up this page. I'm gonna shut up and pop on some music. Next, a little gingerbread man. Next, a creepy ornament. How about a nice cup of hot cocoa? Followed by some sinister cookies for Santa. You know Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. How about Rudolph the Red-Eyed Reindeer? Okay, he got creepy. Let's get cuter with an adorable little penguin. Okay, one last sketch. It's gotta be Santa. But I didn't wanna make such a jolly figure look creepy, so instead I went literal with Black Christmas and made a sweet little black Santa. I freaking love him. Now we Mod Podge and cut them out. Testing out placement, locked in. Let's add a little bit of snow to the background for good measure. Now add a little red to the prompt. And that concludes this page. I had fun with this challenge, but was also pretty stressed out. Time limits just don't produce the best art. And it's clear to see the difference in the first three sketches versus the ones where I had no limit on the coloring time. Still fun though. Now let's recap all of the holiday magic we created this week. We created a family. My family merged with the Adams family. Enjoying a creepy, kooky, mysterious, and spooky Christmas. Love this one. We created a border. Painting this lovely blue winterscape around the edges of the page. Looking at it, I'm immediately transported to my own little winter wonderland. So peaceful. We created an unusual combo, a Christmas tree made entirely out of a variety of Christmas cookies, a truly scrumptious looking spread that has me super excited to bake this year's cookies with my kids. We created a record of my week, last week specifically. I'm glad it was somewhat of an eventful week, otherwise this could have been pretty boring. It was simple, but I'm not mad at it. And lastly, we created a whole bunch of black Christmas themed one minute sketches. Again, I had fun challenging myself, and despite how nerve-wracking it was, I'm pretty impressed that every image on this page was sketched in under a minute. I'm happy with it. Thanks for spending another awesome week with me. Until next time, a goodbye!